right now. New at noon, a San Antonio nonprofit that provides assistance to pregnant women and young parents has had its state funding suspended. This comes after an investigation by the KSAT 12 defenders revealed it used the money on trips, a smoke shop and land later registered to produce industrial hemp. A, a, a state official confirmed that a new life for new generation had its taxpayer funded reimbursement suspended on December 23rd. Leaders of the nonprofit claim that it provides material assistance like diapers and formula, as well as counseling to San Antonio families. However, financial records for New Life showed it also funded multiple out of state trips. The smoke shop business owned by the nonprofit's president and founder, Markeka Reed. Reed has not responded to inquiries sent to her personal and New Life email accounts. We want to take a quick look outside with live cam. Some of you saw something kind of unusual falling from the sky in San Antonio this morning. Yeah, we got a quick round of sleet. Uh, a lot of people sending in pictures on our KSAT Connect, which we appreciate, by the way. Helps us tell the story. We'll show some of those pictures coming up. So precipitation coming through now. Temperatures are well above freezing. We're in the mid-40s right now, but it's cold aloft, and some of that sleet did make it to the ground. When you have temperatures at the surface like this, though, it very quickly melts. There is zero impact. It's just kind of a gee whiz thing, but interesting to see nonetheless. And we, again, did get quite a few pictures in. We'll share some of those with you. There's a look at the uh, satellite and radar, and you can see some of the precipitation moving through the hill country, mainly north of our area. But Fredericksburg will get in on some of this here within the next, well, 30 minutes or so. Some of that. Uh, uh, rain moving through and maybe mixing with some sleet even there in the hill country too. Junction reporting some rain. It's all moving east. We had that little shower area of precipitation move through a little bit earlier. Northern San Antonio just moved out. Now we're just left with some cloud cover and a little bit closer. You can see that uh, that batch that moved through that caused the sleet to come down a little bit earlier. Take a look at this picture in our case at connect. This is out of Selma. Uh, Gropple sleet. Uh, that's what we're showing there on the, the deck and a, a great shot sent in there by Tammy. Most of this actually in the form of some sleep. Temperature wise, 46 at the airport. We mentioned we're well, well above freezing. Look at Stinson, 55. 46 Bolverde, 45 Bernie Stage, 45 Rio Medina. And temperatures will probably make it into the 50s today. So well, already in the 50s for folks to the south of San Antonio. And I think even here in town that'll happen. So the forecast. Calls for a high right around 53. We're going to keep on a slight chance of a shower sprinkle. I think we're probably done with the sleet. And the northeast chilly winds 5 to 10 miles per hour. Temperatures do warm up tomorrow. We'll see more sun. We have more on that coming up in just a few minutes, guys. Thank you, Justin. Uh, what will they do now? That's the question that as many as 20 families are asking after a fire sparked inside their apartment building, not once but twice. The first fire broke out last night at the apartment complex near Wurzbach Road in Gardendale. Then overnight, it rekindled. Katrina Weber reports fire investigators now trying to find out what caused this. The flames and smoke that firefighters met in the middle of the night seemed like a case of deja vu. When they arrived at the Wurzbach Manor Apartments after 2.30 this morning, they realized they had been there before. The fire, which originally broke out around 7.30 last night, had sparked up again. Firefighters hit it with hoses from above and worked on the ground, trying to put out stubborn flames hiding inside the roof. As many as 20 families who were displaced the first time around were still out of their homes when the second call came out. Firefighters say there were no injuries, but daylight showed there is a lot of loss. It appears even the apartments that weren't touched by the fire will have extensive damage. They definitely got more than their share of water and smoke. None of that stopped their occupants from hoping. Some came back expecting to get inside and save what they could. But firefighters still were there more than 12 hours after the initial call, making sure there was no chance of round number three with the fire. They say the apartment management and American Red Cross are helping the fire victims. Investigators are working to find out what caused the fire. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. And new at noon, we're learning more about one of the Johnson High School students that was killed in that deadly crash over the weekend. The Bear County Medical Examiner's Office has identified one of them as 17-year-old Ziv Houdani. Police say he and another teen were killed in a crash on Bull Verde Road Saturday afternoon. The other car involved had a mother and her daughter inside. They were taken to the hospital. The cause of the crash is still unknown.
And some other traffic troubles on the city's northeast side following a crash that involved an 18 wheeler and a train. San Antonio police tell us this happened just before 830 along the southbound access road of I-35 near Ritterman Road. Stephen Cavasso shows us how that crash left a mess for first responders and it led to big delays for drivers. Now, while traffic may be moving here along the I-35 access road, it was definitely slowing down earlier for other drivers. After San Antonio police say the driver of an 18-wheeler tried to beat a moving train. However, it was a choice that led to problems for other drivers. We're told the driver of the 18-wheeler was trying to get on the access road of I-35 near Ritterman, but at the same time, a train was heading northbound on the tracks. Police say that didn't stop the driver from trying to cross. The train wound up hitting the trailer portion of the 18-wheeler, which left behind scattered debris along the railroad tracks. At least one lane of traffic was shut down along the access road as first responders worked to clear things up. Now, thankfully, the driver of that 18-wheeler was not hurt, but we are told by police that this did lead to a two-hour delay for drivers here along the the Axis Road. Stephen Cavazos, KSAT 12 News. And happening today, Governor Greg Abbott is set to deliver remarks here in San Antonio. He'll be joined by sheriffs from communities all around Texas. It's still not clear exactly what the governor is expected to say. We will have more about his speech tonight on KSAT 12 News at 5 and again at 6. And now to the latest on the coronavirus pandemic. COVID hospitalizations hitting a record high nationwide. Cases also skyrocketing. As hospitals and airlines feel that strain, health officials say higher quality masks could help minimize the spread of the highly transmissible, transmissible Omicron variant. ABC's Rena Roy has the latest. COVID is racing across the country yet again. The U.S. hitting another grim record, 141,000 Americans hospitalized with COVID, more than 1,500 deaths reported each day. That's up over 34% in the last week. We're in the thick of this latest fight against the Omicron tsunami washing across the state. Roughly one in 70 Americans testing positive for the virus in the last week alone. One in four hospitals in the U.S. reporting a critical Medical staffing shortage. We need to be healthy, you know, as healthcare workers and registered nurses so that we can care for our patients. Airlines also feeling the impact. United saying it's cutting flights with 3,000 of its employees testing positive. Medical experts saying higher quality masks that fit securely can help minimize spread. Latest research done before the Omicron surge estimated for two people wearing cloth masks, it can take about 30 minutes to spread the virus from an infected person to an uninfected person in the same room. If both are wearing surgical masks, it can take about an hour. And if they're both wearing N95 masks, it can take up to 25 hours to cause an infection. Higher grade masks are really going to protect people because they not only have a more proper fit, they have a better seal, but they also have a better filtration device and they have an electrostatic potential to actually repel away the virus. The CDC, according to the Washington Post, is now considering updating its mask guidance to potentially advise Americans to wear higher quality N95 or KN95 masks instead of cloth masks. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. The city of San Antonio continuing its efforts to try to expand testing opportunities. Another testing site opened up today. It's at the Yates Community Center on Rasa Drive. You can go there to get a free PCR COVID-19 test. That location, though, not taking appointments. It's walk up only. We have a full list of testing sites right now on KSAT.com. You see that QR code that's in the lower left hand side of your screen? You can uh, put that, get a screenshot of that, and go to that page right now to get a list of the COVID-19 locations. You know, if you took a poll right now, you'd probably find a lot of Georgia Bulldog fans around the country today. They beat Alabama last night. How they did it, coming up in sports. Atascosa County Livestock Show back, and dozens of students are excited after the break how they're taking part in this year's event. The 68th annual Atascosa County Livestock Show kicked off this week, an event local students have been waiting for. Dozens of students from Somerset ISD participating, some showing animals they've been raising, others presenting agricultural projects. Tiffany Huertas has a look at this year's event. 
Being part of something like this teaches students different skills, leadership, teamwork, and so much more. Just take a look. These are the students from Somerset High School getting ready for the big show. We have teacher Justin Taylor and student Leo Strauzzi. Good morning. Talk to us. You've been doing this since fourth grade competing. How is the experience like? Well, the experience is pretty good. It, it's probably better whenever you know you your hard work is paying off whenever you can make the sale and your pig is just heading off in the right direction with the feed, the preparation, and all the time and effort you've put into it. How many days a week are you raising these animals? Well, I raise them all, all from September whenever we buy them uh, throughout the February, which is San Antonio, the last show of the year. And we raise them... Well, every every day of the week, we just walk them about three days a week, though, because, you know, I have other stuff with schoolwork and stuff like that. It's fun. And what are other shows that the students will be competing in? They'll be competing in all kinds of shows. They have rabbits, they have poultry, they'll have the steer and heifer show, which was yesterday. The ag mechanics is going on today. Uh, sheep and goats will be tomorrow, and then they'll wrap up with the pig show on Thursday, and then the sale on Saturday. And the students can win some great prizes. Absolutely, absolutely. Not just cash money, but scholarships are available, and just really the knowledge and the experience, and then the life lessons they learn from showing animals is the biggest gain they gain from this. And with COVID cases rising, was there any concern that the show would be canceled and what precautions are you all taking? There's always concern about canceling. You have seen that some of the schools in Houston and other places have started to cancel. But with the due diligence of our school board and of our administration at our school and of the county officials that we get tested every Monday there at Somerset High School and we make sure that we don't spread the variants, we don't spread Delta or Omicron and we do our very best to make sure that we're not the cause for any of that extra stuff and we're doing our due, due part for, for society. About 100 students from Somerset ISD will be competing in this show. Reporting from Atascosa County Livestock Show, Tiffany Huertas, KSAT 12 News. What is it about watching the pigs in these shows? I don't, I don't know. And, 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 and the kids hang out with those animals yeah. all day, all night. It's really something. Dedication. Friends. Buddies. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, good stuff. Hey, you just saw with live cam there, the sun's trying to shine through some of those high clouds out there, but we've also had some precipitation today. Of course, we talked about earlier, a little bit of sleet coming down here in San Antonio. The aquifer is holding steady, 663.2 in your pollen count. Mountain cedar's moderate. It dropped today. That's fantastic news. Molds are also low at 380. We're going to talk about some of this precipitation that's moving through and when we'll see a warm up coming up. Got those little, I don't know, little sleet here and there grapple. that you can barely see. I, I wasn't, I, I don't bit. remember grapple. Yeah, we talked about grapple before, although I think this is probably more in the category of sleet. Yeah. Uh, okay. That came down a little bit earlier, and it was, you know, kind of hear the ping ping on the window. Didn't last very long, but uh, it was just one of Interesting those. Interesting morning. Yeah. It was. Yeah, a lot of people stepped outside to see what was going on. Stirred up some memories, though. Uh, of course. Uh, I think we're all a little bit on edge. Nothing. Nothing <laughs> like that, okay? <laughs> Temperatures are well above freezing. This is all melted as basically as soon as it hit the ground. But we look at the live radar right now. The, the heaviest of the rain and precipitation is up there around Burnett, uh, Marble Falls, Round Rock. And we're getting some reports up there of some sleet coming down as well, mixing in with some of the rain. But again, temperatures are so far above freezing that this is just not an issue. Let's zoom in a little bit closer to San Antonio. And you'll see we had that precipitation move through earlier. It's uh, it's out of here. A little of, uh, bit of light return there around Seguin and Luling, but probably just a few sprinkles now in San Antonio is uh, fairly quiet at the moment. Uh, let's go to the time lapse and you can see some of this coming through. We started off with a little bit of sun and then right there you see a couple patches of precipitation. 46 degrees at the airport right now and we're reporting cloudy skies. Let's go to some of those pictures on the KSAT Connect. This out of the uh, SeaWorld area and you can see the little sleet ice pellets there on the ground. And uh, this one is from the Tally Road area and it kind of collected on that, that uh, rug there. Most of this, well, it's all melted by now just because uh, temperatures begin in the mid 40s right now. Future cast shows that a lot of this precipitation is going to continue to move east and away from us. We'll still get some cloud cover through the evening. And by the way, we are seeing some breaks in those clouds down to the south and east. Still some clouds tomorrow morning. 
If you're hoping for some sun, we'll get you some tomorrow afternoon. Tomorrow afternoon should be beautiful. Temperatures in the mid 60s, a lot more sun in the forecast. Uh, we're just not seeing that today. You can see all the clouds. There is the break in the cloud cover. Beeville, Pleasanton over to Victoria. So sun shining there and obviously temperatures are going to be much warmer underneath the clouds though. 46 in Kerrville, 46 in San Antonio, and that was just cold enough. We have cold air, much colder air aloft to uh, keep the sleet intact as it uh, fell in and around San Antonio. 50s, Carrizo Springs, Uvalde, 51 degrees there. And dew points, well, they're low, but they're trying to come up a little bit. With some of that precipitation, we've seen the dew points kind of rise into the 30s. The, the air is still very dry, and some of this is still evaporating, but obviously some of it did make it to the ground today. Uh, just a potent little system moving to our north. 53 degrees, the forecast high. We're going to keep things mostly cloudy today and still a very small chance of a sprinkle or two, although I think that is beginning to pass us by here. You look at the water vapor and you can see that compact little system I was talking about uh, kind of wound up here as it moves through north Texas and that'll continue to quickly push east. As it does, it takes all the precipitation with it. As I mentioned, we clear out tomorrow. Thursday and Friday look beautiful too. A lot of sun, temperatures in the 70s. And then by the weekend, here comes our next front. I think it's through by sunrise on Saturday. Behind it, gusty winds, cooler conditions, and unfortunately, no rain with this front. We keep getting these fronts coming through without any precipitation, and that's not a good thing, especially when we get gusty winds behind it. Uh, all the precipitation will be well off to our east, so expect a windy Saturday. 65 tomorrow. We start off at 39, by the way. 73 Thursday, 73 Friday. Some gusts to 40 miles per hour possible with that front on Saturday. Dips us into the 50s and 60s both Saturday and Sunday and to start next week, guys. You celebrating, Justin? Celebrating? Mm -hmm. Celebrating? The new national championship <laughs> college football team? Well, I mean, it is the SEC. I mean, who, who isn't celebrating in the, <laughs> this country? A lot of folks are pretty happy, except those folks in Alabama. They're not too thrilled. Yeah. Walk-on turned NCAA football champion. We've got the highlights from last night's game and the Spurs in their long road trip, just like they started it. And there is a new national champion in college football, UGA. The University of Georgia dominated Alabama in the second half last night to beat Bama for the first time in eight tries and win their first national championship since 1980. All field goals and punts in the first half, fourth quarter, 13-12 Georgia. Bryce Young rolling out, throwing back across his body to Cameron Latou. Two-point conversion, no good. Bama up 18-13. Georgia's next possession, fourth play. Stetson Bennett going deep for the end zone. Adonai Mitchell pass on the money. The Bulldogs get the lead back 19-18. The Dogs defense forces a punt. The offense starts to take control of it. This time, Bennett to Brock Bowers. This is a 15-yard catch and score. And now the Bulldogs are up 26-18. Bama still has time. They need a TD and a two-point conversion to tie. But the Heisman winner, Bryce Young, goes deep, and it is picked off by Keeley Ringo. And he's going to return it 79 yards for another score. The Dogs win the national championship 33-18. Bennett overcame two fumbles and a very shaky start. But the former walk-on, now a champion. I, I knew that once I fumbled the ball, I was not going to be the reason we lost this game. And, you know, Coach Monk, dialed up awesome play action you know we had been running the ball a lot um, and I think we went you know three straight play action and then one um, one deep ball that we got them to jump off sides because they've been timing up the snap a lot um, but you know it's it's the, it's the thing that coach smart and the whole team has been preaching the whole year resiliency toughness composure you know connection and I knew that those guys beside me had my back and I had their back too and they've got a national championship trophy to prove it. University of Georgia over the University of Alabama, 33 to 18. Ursula was excited. Why don't you get excited about the Spurs? Before the national championship game started, the Spurs tipped off against the Knicks, wrapping up their seven-game road trip. Still shorthanded. Spurs down seven players. Joshua Primo, third start, making the most of it. Tied at 17. Primo hits at three. Then Lonnie Walker comes up with the steal on the inbounds pass. Bryn Forbes nails with three balls. San Antonio up 26-23 after one second quarter. Jante Murray gives the Spurs their largest lead. The layup. San Antonio goes up 35-29. And then late in the half, Spurs down four. Murray steals it again. And Finishes with the two-handed jam, but San Antonio trailed 51-49 at halftime. We go to the third quarter. Spurs still up, 
and they're still keeping up. Murray scores three straight buckets, including this 17-footer. San Antonio down by four, but the Knicks counter with a quick 5-0 run from R.J. Barrett. He gets the floater to fall and draws the foul for three-point play. New York up 82-75, heading into the fourth quarter, and then they put it away early in the fourth with a commanding 18-2 run. That opened it up a 23-point lead. The Spurs lose their four straight, 111-96. And they go just one in six on their seven game road trip. Stick with each other, uh, be confident and and move on. And some of these losses uh, that we had like on this road trip will turn into wins as we get guys back and they, you know, stick with each other. Yeah, towards the end of last night's game, they looked gassed after this, what, 11-day road trip, seven games. They need some of those guys back. They were missing like six, seven guys last night. So hopefully someone will be back in time for the Houston Rocks to come to town Wednesday, tomorrow night, 7.30, tip-off, AT&T Center. Admit it, you were cheering for Georgia, too. No, not in my family. <laughs> no. Check this out. A dog <laughs> rescued after four months in the wild. How he was finally found and then reunited with his owner. You forgot I got two that went to Alabama. I know, I was baiting no you a little I bit. do that. <laughs> New Today at five, and they, they got some of my money too. I just New poked in the bear, that's all. <laughs> You're feeling stressed, worried, or you got some anxiety going, this can lead to problems sleeping or even breathing. 12 on your size, Mary Lamore is gonna show us the items that can help you ease that anxiety. That's Today at five, after entertainment tonight. $308 million, that's how much money the United States is giving to humanitarian organizations in Afghanistan. The money for shelter, essential health services, emergency food, water, and hygiene services amid the COVID-19 pandemic and winter season. That's according to the National Security Council. The U.S. also providing 1 million additional COVID-19 vaccines. And this aid coming months after the U.S. completed its military withdrawal from Afghanistan. Now to the high stakes talks between the United States and Russia over Ukraine. Both sides speaking for seven hours, though little progress was made as tens of thousands of Russian troops remain stationed along the border with Ukraine. ABC's Aika Jachi has the latest. High stakes talks between the U.S. and Russia proved inconclusive as Moscow presents its most fundamental challenge to Europe since the end of the Cold War. The Russians want NATO to stop encroaching on its borders, as well as a guarantee that Ukraine will never join the alliance, something American officials call a non-starter. For months, Russia has assembled 100,000 troops on Ukraine's borders, threatening war if its demands aren't met. It's already backing rebels in the country's east. You hear the sound of rapid automatic gunfire there and telling us to go. As for the talks, the U.S. saying the meeting was frank and forthright in tone, but not an actual negotiation, saying the U.S. isn't at that point yet. The White House clearly laying out the two directions Russian President Putin can choose. He can take the path to diplomacy. There's two more rounds of talks this week, uh, or there's a path of escalation. We are certainly hopeful that uh, the path to diplomacy is the path uh, that they will take. What we have called for is a return to their barracks. And if we see a return to their barracks, that is an indication of de-escalation. The Russians also making their position clear. Ukraine and neighboring Georgia can never become part of NATO. We need ironclad, waterproof, bulletproof, legally binding guarantees never ever becoming member of NATO. The next meeting between the two sides will be on Wednesday. The U.S. has proposed reducing military exercises or increasing transparency around them to address Russia's concerns. But Russia says that's not enough. And experts fear if its concerns aren't met, Moscow may launch a full-scale invasion of Ukraine. Ike Jachi, ABC News, Washington. With less than 10 months until the midterm elections, President Biden is heading to Georgia today to make his biggest push yet for national voting rights bills. He's also expected to call for changes to the Senate's filibuster rules in order to get those bills passed. Georgia is one of 19 states that have passed new voting laws since the 2020 election. There have been 34 new laws in total across the country, and most of them are in states controlled by Republicans. China stepping up its COVID crackdown again as more cases are being reported with the Winter Olympics looming soon. Several neighborhoods in a city not far from the site of the games are on a strict lockdown. Maggie Ruley is following those developments. 
Many Olympic hopefuls are here in Austria right now for World Cup events ahead of the Games. And many we've talked to said the stress of testing positive for COVID is weighing on them. And now it's just weeks to go until the Winter Olympics in Beijing. Omicron has been found right on the capital's doorstep. Authorities confirming for the first time at least two local Omicron cases detected out of 50 in the capital's neighboring city of Tianjin, a city of 13 million that's just a half hour train ride away, meaning there was a real possibility that Omicron will soon be in the Chinese capital if it isn't already. Just today, a third Chinese city was put under lockdown, bringing the total number of people who cannot leave their homes right now in China to 20 million. But Chinese authorities are betting on that strict bubble around the Olympics, believing it will hold. Everyone, including athletes, will have to take at least two tests before they fly and then one every day after they land. And if they do test positive at the games, they'll have to go into quarantine hotel for at least three weeks. That is something that no one wants to do, and they have been training their entire lives for this moment. Maggie Ruley, ABC News, Salzburg, Austria. The Northeast now bracing for extreme cold weather, and it's expected to reach a wind chill of minus 40 degrees in some areas. Not here in San Antonio, y'all. Some schools canceling classes to prevent people from being out in that extreme cold. Low temperatures below zero, not including the wind chill expected in Vermont and New Hampshire, and I bet Maine's in there too. Forecaster said Providence, Rhode Island should expect a wind chill value of as low as minus one degree Fahrenheit. And New York City also is in for it. Sub-zero temperatures when that wind chill gets factored in. Sounds like a polar vortex to me. Oh, oh he said it. I didn't. <laughs> Isn't it weird, though, that we can relate to those folks? We, yeah. Yeah. Hey, we, we know how that feels. It's awful. Good luck. Uh, we wish you the best. I We're, hope they're better prepared. I, well, uh, yeah, and uh, it, it's not going to be that cold here. That's the good news. Uh, we did see a little bit of wintry weather, though, this morning in the form of some sleet. With that being said, uh, it mixed in with some rain, melted very quickly. We were well above freezing. It was zero impact, uh, but we did, as we mentioned, get some pictures in on our KSAC Connect, and we've been sharing those. Uh, as we look at the satellite and radar picture here, the batch of main batch of precipitation now is well to our north. This is scooting east through parts of the hill country and central Texas towards the I-35 corridor. There is some sleet mixed in here. But if you're traveling north, don't worry about road conditions being bad, other than the roads may be a little bit wet as uh, some of that precipitation moves east. For us, the precipitation has moved out. We've got uh, cloudy skies with a few breaks, uh, even around Floresville. You'll find some sun as you go south and east of San Antonio. And that's where temperatures are warmer. 46 degrees at Randolph, 47 Bulverde, 47 Canyon Lake, 45 Comfort, 44 right now in Bandera. You got 50s down to the south, as I mentioned, 58 Pleasanton, 59 in Beeville. Forecast takes us up to about 53. We can't completely rule out a few more sprinkles, but I think the uh, chance for precipitation is winding down here. Northeasterly winds 5 to 10 miles per hour. Are we ready for a warm up? We've got one in store for you tomorrow. We'll talk more about that here in just a few minutes, guys. Thank you, Justin. Okay, check this out. An amazing rescue in snowy northern California. Uh, this dog here got lost in the wilderness for months. The dog was with its owner in August. However, they got separated when those wildfires swept through the Tahoe area, prompting evacuations. But then four months later, a skier spotted the dog. It was stuck in five foot deep snow. All of a sudden saw this dark shape underneath the tree and then he opened his eyes and I'm pretty sure I screamed. <laughs> Animal rescue volunteers traveled up steep terrain to the scene. They wrapped the dog in a blanket and then brought it down on a sled. Officials say he recovered and was later reunited with his family. Lucky pup for sure. The state uh, Texas state student still missing and the search is still on more than a year after he disappeared. Now police are releasing new information and new video that they uncovered during the investigation. We have the latest on that after the break. It has been more than a year since a Texas state student disappeared. Now police are sharing more information about their investigation. As KTBC's Shannon Ryan reports, the never before seen video and police audio leading to more questions than answers as this search continues for Jason Landry. Hello. 
Back outside with live cam, 47 degrees. It's chilly. It's it looks like winter. Those are those winter clouds. It looks like okay, winter. Okay, so we, yeah. we started two weeks of winter about a week ago. Mm -hmm. So we got another week to go. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. That's I guess how it's so. supposed to work. Uh, kind of, kind of. Uh, yeah, so far today, 46 degrees uh, it has been the high so far. I think we will eventually get up close to 50. 37 was the low this morning. Averages are 63 and 41. We did, by the way, pick up a hundredth of an inch of precipitation at the airport. We'll talk more about the precip that's moving through and when temperatures warm up. It's coming up. So you're saying a week is a week away from the end of winter? Is that well, two things could happen in the next couple of weeks. Mountain cedar is going to go away. Ooh, that's all. And that we, don't we usually say around Somewhere. Valentine's Day? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we got about Ooh, a month of that. Geez. A bit longer. Yep. yep. <laughs> so let's just make <laughs> winter short. <laughs> was that? Was that a well, if, if we, it would be nice if we had this kind of control, but uh, oh. you know. Oh. You mean? Okay. Yeah, I mean, remember I it was thought, February I thought last you were year. all powerful at this point. <laughs> no, 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 no. You made it sleet today in some places. Ooh, well, uh, it, it did come down to sleet in a few spots. We That's kind of exciting. We thought we'd see some light precipitation. Uh, it was just cold enough to get some of the sleet. Take a look at this picture, guys. Uh, this is sent in by Yvonne, and this is out near the SeaWorld area. You can see some of the, uh, the sleet. That's like a, one of those dog beds. Yeah, and it, no dog though. Dogs in the no, house. No, like, it's cold yeah. out here. <laughs> Getting warm. Uh, but it just collected there. And temperatures were in the mid 40s, okay? So it was very cold aloft and just cold enough at the surface to where some of the sleet could survive all the way down to the surface, but immediately melting. Now that's why there were no issues whatsoever on the roads or anything like that. And as we look at the live radar right now, uh, everything's cleared out of San Antonio, so things are pretty quiet here, and I think it'll continue to be that way. The bulk of the precipitation is up there uh, north of us around Burnett, Colleen, over towards Round Rock, just north of Austin, and there is still a little bit of sleep mixing in here, probably as this little band of precipitation moves east. Uh, our forecast takes a lot of that east of here by four o'clock. We're still left with some clouds, though, so it'll be a mostly cloudy day, and then by six o'clock, Still rain, uh, precipitation off to our north and east, clouds overnight by tomorrow morning, probably a mostly cloudy start, but by the afternoon, those clouds go away and we, we get sun for your Wednesday. Forecast for the rest of today, we'll take it up to about 53, uh, very, very small chance for a sprinkle or two, and then temperatures dip back down into the 40s tonight. There's the scene outside that David would describe as very winter-like, I would agree. Blanket of clouds over top of us. 46 at the airport, 55 Stinson. You see the temperature difference there. 50 Kelly, 46 at Randolph. You go south to San Antonio, there is actually some sun, and that is boosting temperatures into the mid to upper 50s uh, down around Pleasanton. 47 Canyon Lake, 46 Comfort, close to 60 in Beeville, and there are actually 60s along the coast. 54 Carrizo Springs, 54 in Del Rio. Let's talk dew points now. The air is very dry. One of the reasons that any precipitation we saw today didn't amount to much and the dew points stay really low. They don't really get a chance to bounce back. We get another front Saturday, and so with low dew points, you don't get any rain with these fronts, and that, uh, that's not a great thing, considering we're gonna get some gusty winds on Saturday. And then you have to start worrying about if the air is dry enough, is there a threat for wildfires and things like that? I'm not saying that there is necessarily, but it's just something we're gonna have to watch out for going forward if we don't get rain with these, uh, these fronts coming through. On water vapor, you see a little twist in the atmosphere right there. That's that area of low pressure that's producing the precip today. And as uh, we go forward in time, that quickly moves east. Sun tomorrow, as we showed you, Thursday and Friday, a lot of sun. Temperatures back in the 70s. And then here comes that next front. Any rain with this is gonna probably be well to our east and southeast. And then it turns windy. Most of the day, Saturday, gusty north winds, we're hoping that doesn't boost the mountain cedar numbers, uh, but it keeps us on that roller coaster ride. So 50s today, 60s tomorrow, 70s Thursday, Friday, dip back into the 50s Saturday, and then we start the process all over again. Here's the uh, extended forecast. Uh, really no chances of rain anywhere in there. Uh, gust of 40 miles per hour possible on Saturday with that, uh, with that next front. And by the way, temperature's looking good for MLK day, 64 degrees there and mostly sunny skies, guys.